Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. I've got a nice clean video of today's uh, coffee and a mystery, not a card. Every other Thursday in the Kitchen Table Stamper Craft Social, we play coffee and a mystery card. The Wednesday before, so every other Wednesday, I provide clue number one, which is gather your supplies. And then on Thursday at 2 p.m. Central, we get together in the craft social and I lead you through a stamp along to make the card. Well, yesterday I asked my craft social if they wanted to do a coffee and a mystery, not a card. <laughs> so this is what I am going to lead my group through today. We'll see how that goes. Isn't this cute? Okay, so it's a little um tuck tab box and i've got one of these kit kat apple pie limited edition i'm still finding these at the checkout stands in my local walmart so that's where i got that one thought it'd be perfect with my favorite little harvest hello stamp set i'm so sad this one is leaving so this is going to be kind of one of my little hello goodbye series of videos. We're going to wish happy harvest, a very happy retirement with this project, but I'm also going to show you some fun new products that are coming in the 2021-2022 annual catalog. All right, so let's get started. Let me show you here. So when we play coffee in a mystery, I guess not a card, I provide you with a list of supplies together. So the first thing we're going to do is grab our solid card stock and it is seven by six and three quarters. I've got poppy parade here. And of course, you would choose any that you want in preparation for the game. All right, on there, there are the scoring instructions. So let's grab this simply scored tool, get this guy in there. And it says we're gonna score on the seven inch side. So let's pop that in and find our seven inch side. There we go. We're gonna score this dude at one half, one, three and three quarters and four and a quarter on the seven inch side. This half one is always hard for me to get. I jumped the track a lot. Right-handed people in that one inch, or one half inch score is a tough one. All right, one is our next score. Three and three quarters and four and a quarter. Then we're gonna rotate quarter of a turn to the right and score on the six and three quarter inch side. So quarter of a turn to the right We're on the six and three quarter inch side at one half. Oh, that half again, four and a half and five. All right. So one half. So slow. Don't jump the track. Four and a half and five. Now, let's work the score lines with a bone folder and we're going to trim it according to the template all right so let me grab my bone folder and we'll get started all right there it is and let's get started so you've got the one half and one inch creases on your left side let's trim away and make a glue tab here. So this first half inch is a glue tab. Trim that out. I like to do a little angle cut and remove the score lines. And then now we're gonna do these rectangle and square in this top corner here. All right, so there is our first segment, our little glue tab. Now we've got a half inch side for the box and we want a little tab so let's remove from the top this long rectangle and then we can cut all the way down when we're removing the long rectangle to the second score now from that second score line we're going to cut across the front of our box and we can take out these two rectangles entirely so we'll cut straight down the score, taking out the crease, and there you can save that piece if you want to for punching or die cutting. That's a big scrap right there. Now we need another tab on the top. So this little square stays. Let's cut along the top of it. 
And then we can get rid of this long rectangle, but this whole section here we're gonna keep. So go down and remove the score and then a little bevel cut there on our tab so that our box closes more cleanly. All right, let's check these guys. Get a little bevel cut on these tabs. Now, the bottom tabs, we're just gonna liberate these by doing a little dart. Cut out the score. One, two, three. And there is our box. Now I'm gonna grab a corner rounder and I'm gonna round the corners so that my little tuck flap has that clean detail. You can use the uh, detailed trio punch if you like from Stampin' Up. That's our current corner rounder. And there we go. Next up, according to our clues, we need designer series paper for our box. And we're going to use um, this brand new. So here's, we're saying goodbye to Harvest Hellos, but hello to this. Do you see this massive stack of designer series paper? Gorgeous, gorgeous, multicolor prints. This is a new host item. We're going to use this really sweet little rainbow hearts. On the back, there's a black and white stripe. I thought about using the black and white stripe, but it had too much of a prison <laughs> feel for a teacher gift. Well, let's take a look at these. So each one of these has got a beautiful multicolor A side and then a black and white B side. It's a huge stack of designer series paper. You can get this free with your order as a hostess with Stampin' Up. So whether you have a order with your friends or you host a party, a book party, um, do a little club where you and a friend come together and place the minimum order, you need a $180 order and you get this pack for free. Isn't this gorgeous? Okay, there's the pattern that we're gonna use with the back side. Look at the rainbow scales here. And then leaves. We've got this gorgeous little leopard pattern. Isn't it cute? And then little um, chevrons, a stripe that coordinates with the leopard, same color. And then a little dotted stripe. Look at this beautiful granny apple with the floral. It almost looks like the florals are stitched or quilted. The back is a random polka dot. Misty Moonlight with kind of a sprig pattern. This is a beautiful one. This could be very elegant. And then the crosshatch. I love this crosshatch. Here's a beautiful damask. I think bumblebee. And then a gorgeous buffalo check. I think we're getting into the end of our patterns here. That's the last one. That's the um, kind of spot with this almost a harlequin it looks almost like a stitched harlequin really cool pattern and just a fun pack it's a great one to split with your friends so order with a friend pick some of this designer series paper up for free my designer series paper for this box is two and five eighths by one and five eighths so I'll cut that ahead of time and two and five eighths by three and seven eighths we're gonna glue these to our box, to the front and to the tab. So then let me grab a corner rounder and round those corners to match. Make sure you round the right corners because this is going to flip down over the front. So if you've got a directional pattern like I do, please watch for the direction, okay? So you're gonna round these corners and make sure everything flows directionally. All right, then over here we can just glue. Let's get some multi-purpose liquid glue and glue that down. I just love this new paper pack. Oh my goodness. What a brilliant um, incentive for placing larger orders. You don't have to host a party to get it. Every order qualifies for Stampin' Rewards, whether it's a demonstrator order. So if you join Stampin' Up, you can buy some of this paper right now. 
And if you place an order of $180 or more as a demonstrator, you can get this for free. Customer orders. So if you order $180 by yourself, the new catalog's gorgeous. It's quite possible to have $180 on your wish list. You can get Stampin' Rewards on a um, customer order or on a workshop order. So a workshop order would be you ordering with some of your friends, whether you actually have a workshop or you just pass the book around, that qualifies too. So if you've got any questions about how to earn Stampin' Rewards or if I can help you with a book party, a workshop, reach out and let me know. I'm always happy to help arrange this or even a stamp club. You and a couple of friends, you can order on a regular basis, say monthly or bi-monthly or quarterly and share the host rewards. I'd be happy to organize that for you and your friends. All right, so we've got our designer series paper. Now I need a centering rule, ruler because I cannot eyeball center, but that's okay. A Stampin' Up! grid paper, which you can order. This is available for customers, demonstrators alike. It has a centering ruler on the top edge of the paper. So what we're going to do here is find center between these two points. And this is two and three quarters. So we're looking at on each side one and three eighths. And then we'll mark center. Got another goodbye product here. We're gonna use our two and a quarter inch circle punch. And that's gonna give us this little swoop, like thumb notch where you can grab our treat out of our box. I don't know why Stampin' Up! is retiring such a basic, except for that, you know, sales of it must have slowed down because a lot of people already have it. But if you don't have a two and a quarter inch circle punch, it's a really fast way to make layers and it's really handy for treat boxes. Now, as I line this up, I'm aiming for the center, this little circle in there can kind of help you visualize center, but I'm also watching my creases. So do you see where the side creases of my box are equal at the corners of the punch? So once you got it set up pretty well that way, then you can punch out and I do this upside down. You want to be very careful when you hold a punch upside down, give yourself a big grip. I always say this is like, you want to hold it like you got a big greasy hamburger and you don't want to get any on you because you don't want to pinch your hands in this punch as it comes down. So we'll go through and punch through. We're punching through cardstock and paper. So give it a good squeeze, but keep your hands out of the way. And now look at that. This always reminds me of the Crayola or the crayon box. So there we go. We're getting there. We've almost got our box built. We need some tear and tape to assemble it. You'll put your tear and tape adhesive on this glue tab. Looks like I got a little bit of an angle tear. Let's see if I can follow my angle. There we go. And we'll also add tear and tape along the front bottom tab. So we want the seams to always go to the back of the box so we can lift up that bottom tab and add some tear and tape there. When I grab my take your pick tool, I love this take your pick tool for liberating the adhesive from the liner. And here we went over the edge. You can see that all I do there is just tuck that back down. No big deal. And then we can liberate this guy too. Just be careful now. Don't glue your box to the table now that you've got these strong adhesives exposed. And we're a little over the edge here. Just roll it back under. All right, first we're going to do the side seam of our box. So I like to fold at that first score line and kind of roll the back of the box to the front. We're looking to line up these two score lines with this corner point on our box. And we don't want to extend past the fold. And once you got it kind of tacked in, the nice part about this box is, be careful, you don't want to glue it closed, but you can just kind of flatten and burnish. Then pop it back open, tuck in the side tabs, bring the back to the front, and then the front to the back. But while you're bringing the front to the back, it's really crucial here that you square up your box. You don't want it to be 
tilty at this point because then you don't have a rectangle box. Do you see how this tab is all tilted? You want to really try to hold this up square. And then once you've got that touched down, you can take your bone folder again and burnish it from the inside. So stand up your box and you can burnish that bottom and then you can use your bone folder and burnish that seam. Aren't you so proud of yourself? Look at that. You've got the cutest little box. Now, of course, we're going to throw an apple pie Kit Kat in there, but these come in so many different flavors, limited editions. This box is going to be the treat that keeps on giving. Harvest Hellos is an excellent stamp set for craft fairs. Treats like this sell awesome, being that it's a stamp and punch, super easy. Let me tuck this guy closed and let's get ready to do some stamping. I'm going to grab my stamping pads and some papers. Got scraps of Poppy Parade, Soft Suede. Uh, let's see here. What else are we stamping on? This is basic black and it is a scrap, but it's a measured scrap so that we can fit it in our chalkboard. This piece is one and seven sixteenths, so just a sixteenth shy of one and a half by two and three quarters. This little guy is going to get our two and A plus teacher embossed across the top. We're going to use Versamark ink, and I've got a buddy, so I'm going to just very lightly touch black with my buddy. If you don't have one of these, um, from Retired Stampin' Up, check out your Dollar Tree. They seem to have buddies and glue erasers lately, which is pretty awesome. I got my white embossing powder. This is another goodbye product. If you don't have embossing powder or sufficient quantities, now's the time to grab one on your order because embossing is what got me hooked on stamping. Let's go ahead and make this gorgeous white contrast on our black chalkboard. We're going to ink up with Versamark, stamp across the top. I always transfer my embossing powder from those little canisters into a tub because then you can just dip the sentiment into the tub and you've got embossing with no mess. Set that one aside for just a second. I'm going to clear away the um, embossing powder, the ink pad, and then we'll heat that to set. I like to keep a clothespin around for embossing. I'm going to hold on to my piece. We're going to bring in the heat tool and set this powder. This heat tool reaches incredible heat. You don't want to burn your cardstock, toast your embossing powder, or burn your fingers. So keep that in mind when you're embossing. To finish our chalkboard look, I've got a little bit of Whisper White ink here and a sponge. Sponges, they're on the goodbye list today. They're on sale for $3.20 for a package of three sponges. I cut them into sixths. So you got a lot of mileage out of one package. If you don't have sponges or if you need some fresh ones because they don't last forever, pick up some sponges on your next order while they're on sale. Stock up. The price is definitely right. I know I'll be adding a bag or two to my next order just to make sure I've got good clean sponges because let's face it, sponging ink isn't going away. There's our little chalkboard. A little more stamping. Let me grab some ink. We've got Poppy Parade and Soft Suede to go with our cardstock scraps. And we're going to make our apple now. So we want to keep in mind the orientation of our punch when we're stamping. I always said oh, with this one, I've used this a lot and done some really cute projects, especially done great craft fair stuff. When you're doing your apple stem, and to line up with the orientation of the punch, you want to punch your apple stem like an angry eyebrow, you know, like the emoji that's got the eyebrows that tilt in like this. So like an angry eyebrow. And then for your apple 
or it makes pumpkins too. So another great option for craft fairs, quick too. No die cutting, punching is faster. We're gonna stamp to the right side, get our little apple on there, and then we've got a handle so we can reach to punch. I'm gonna clear away the ink pads and we'll do some punching. All right, first our little angry eyebrow. Let's see how easily that lines up. Give it a punch and there's our apple stem. Put that aside. And now our apple. Cutest thing ever. I love this. The Apple Builder Punch is currently on sale if you like this idea and um, think you'll make a lot of apple or pumpkin treats pick it up for seven dollars and twenty cents that's an amazing discount i'm going to take my liquid glue and i'm going to dab just a bit let me show you something really quick before i dab this is a pumpkin stem do you see that with the wide end down and this is an apple stem with the narrow end down so before i lose my apple stem i'm going to go ahead and dab a little bit of liquid glue and glue it to my apple we'll give that a second to dry and do some die cutting and embossing this next piece is a hello goodbye all in one so we're going to cut this scalloped slit rectangle. This is the second from smallest new rectangle. It, this is from the scalloped contours dies and this will be available May 2nd for customers or right now for demonstrators to purchase. If you're not a demonstrator but you've thought about it, this is a product you can add to your starter kit. The starter kit is $99 and you get to choose $125 worth of products. The kit, it's just $99 and shipping is free. You will pay tax on the $99. So it's a great deal. It's probably the best deal in the catalog anytime. Let's go ahead and cut our scalloped slit rectangle from Crumb Cake. And while we're at this, might as well take full advantage. I left my little machine over on the other side of the room. So we might as well take full advantage. We're going to cut a little white flower and green leaf. This is basic white and granny apple green. And we're going to use the new to me. So oh, this is a hello to me, but maybe not to you. Maybe you already know how amazing this die set is. So this is, let's see if I can get it all in there. It's huge. The Pierced Blooms dies. I don't know how I didn't catch on to this earlier. This is the perfect wingman embellishment. You need this set. I didn't realize how bad I needed it until Jane Ann sent me a card. Thank you, Jane Ann. All right, we're going to cut a little flower and a little sprig of leaves too while we're at it. Wait till you see the details that are going to come out on these die cuts. going to show you but I'm not going to move the machine because the next step we're going to add some texture to our little chalkboard frame so let me show you here's our little pierced leaf is that not the cutest thing ever with the little piercing details and then our little flowers I think these could very easily um, translate to snowflakes Aren't they adorable? All right, we need one of those. I'm gonna put the other one aside. And then here's our slit rectangle, scallop rectangle. Do you see the little slits here? I'm not sure how I feel about them, I'll be honest with you, because they're a little flimsy, but maybe they'll prove to have a use. I'm thinking threading ribbon through might be kind of a fun way to use that detail. But since we're using it as a chalkboard frame, I thought we could add a little texture to it using the pine wood planks embossing boulder. I am using this for everything because it's retiring and I'm going to miss it a lot. 
So I'm going to line this up in there. I want to watch my planks, make sure that they're nice and straight and that the stopping and starting points look good. Pop that guy in there. I'm on number one with no adapter. And then we're going to use, uh, let's see here. This is one of the older Sizzix ones. So we'll use number three on top. It's one of the older Sizzix ones. So it has been around for a little while, but that doesn't matter. I'm still going to miss it like crazy. I wanted to use it for one of my swap cards and that's a no, no, because it's going to be gone from there. Now we've got a chalkboard frame that has a little wood grain texture. Got one last little die cut piece here, and I did this one ahead of time. It's my favorite, that middle swoopy square from the Hippo and Friends dies. I cut it from Basic Black. I wanted something to shock the separation between the little wooden frame and this kind of busy designer shears paper pattern. I felt like the edge got lost just a little bit, but with that pop of black, just the very edge of it, it really did, oh, it did wonders to pop that chalkboard frame up a little bit. So let's go ahead and adhere the frame, the chalkboard frame to the die cut, and we're going to center it right to left, and it's gonna be just a little bit high of center top to bottom. You wanna make sure you've got even shoulders and you want to glue this little slit down if you have any issues gluing with liquid glue, then my suggestion to you is to put the multi-purpose sheets on your scraps before you do your die cutting because this is a little bit um, fiddly here. You want to make sure you glue it down so it doesn't get torn and handling because this is a box and it's gonna get open and closed, but you also want to make sure that it's nice and tidy so that you don't have glue oozing out of this this cut i'll always tell you very honestly at kitchen table stamp or sometimes even bluntly what i like and don't like and i'm not sold on this slit i like the size we got that little tiny peek through of the black cardstock but i don't know if that detail is worth how it makes this die kind of delicate kind of flimsy and maybe even a little bit difficult to glue. All right, there's one layer. Now we need to put our chalkboard in the frame. Here's where we get to get really dimensional. I love treats because you don't have to worry about postage. We can just double and triple dimensional this. So I'm gonna add a couple of dimensionals here. Nobody likes a saggy middle. Let's cover the middle there. Need to cut a couple of these down. We'll center it right in those slits. Now, our leaf. Our leaf needs just a little bit of surgery. We're gonna cut off these bottom leaves. They'd be covered anyways. So we're gonna just cut them off. And our apple. I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive on the back of the apple and on the stem. Be very careful here because the apple will extend past the chalkboard, so just down the center. Gonna line that up on the bottom. Just the tiniest little bit of the chalkboard showing. If you've got to, you can kind of adjust your this point, give it a little, I just gave it a little twist, get that glued down. Now I'm gonna slide my leaf underneath my apple before it's completely grabbed and I'm going to use some Stampin' Dimensionals to reinforce what we've got going on with those leaves. So I'm gonna get some minis this time, trim them up in half, and use them behind the leaves to support our little sprig. I like doing this at this stage of the game because we want any adhesive to adhere to the chalkboard or to the label but not to the box. We don't want to take a chance that we glue our box closed. So this little leaf here will get reinforced. I can stick it right to the label so that that adhesive won't close the box or show and then bring the leaf into the adhesive, see? 
Now closing our box. I love these edges for these kind of tuck tag tab boxes. We're gonna go with a nice wide piece right from the edge. And then we're gonna grab two half dimensionals. Got another little edge here about the size of a half dimensional. On the back of our little closer, our little tuck flap here, this beautiful montage we just made, we're gonna add two halves. Then we're gonna go to our box and we're gonna close this up. We want it nice and snug, closed tight and straight and right. And we're gonna put this edge right along that tuck tab, tuck tab. You don't wanna glue it closed, but it can touch and that's okay. Remove the liner. Then we'll bring this whole little assembly right to the box. Now you notice there's a lot of space between this line and these little guys at the back because we're still going to add that ribbon detail. The ribbon is really just decoration. It doesn't hold our box closed and you don't have to tie or untie it to get into the box. I love boxes with ribbon details where you don't have to um, untie and untie them. All right, so our ribbon here is from the Flowers for Every Season Ribbon Combo Pack. It's kind of a linen white solid ribbon and we can go ahead and slide that right underneath because our dimensionals are spread out. Do you see that? Super simple. And then we'll bring around the box and we'll tie a gorgeous decorative bow that doesn't need to be opened and closed, which is bonus, completely a bonus when you're doing treat boxes. All right, so our ribbon's around. We're gonna take right on the spool. This will save you ribbon if you can learn to do this. And the spool comes out from the back of the box, right? We're gonna take the cut end and go over the spool end and tuck. And we'll pull that nice and tight right on the edge of the box. Then we'll lift up the spool end. There's no twisting, no turning, no folding over itself. You just lift, see? Makes a little loop and pinch. You're gonna bring the loose end over the top, always the top, where you're holding that open space right there with your uh, middle finger. You're going to tuck the cut tail through and then pull. Now it might not be perfect yet, but if you hold the center and pull the tails, you can adjust the size of your loops. And then look at that, without any trouble, your ears are up, your tails are down, you're still attached to the spool here. So when you cut this away, you're going to have exactly the amount you need, no waste. And then you just trim this side and get a nice clean tail with the right angle. And that's all the waste. We can just do a little bit more finesse here. I think I might have to adjust the angle of this tail. Nope, looks good. Love it. All right, we're almost there. One more tiny little detail. Remember that flower that we cut? Let's put a mini dimensional on the back of it. and pop it right up on the leaf. I love this happy little detail. I just do. My son came in and said, but mom, now it doesn't know if it's blooming or if it's fruited because the bloom makes the fruit. I guess that apple decided to keep both. <laughs> Such a funny little guy, isn't he? I've got a scrap of mango melody here. I'm I think it's pretty close. That might be pumpkin pie, but I thought it worked nicely with the color and the designer series paper and a quarter inch handheld circle punch. Stampin' Up! doesn't have those anymore, but I've got a Fiskars one that I got on Amazon. And we're going to use that as our flower center. So a little dot of glue, drop that guy right on the center. Uh-oh, it's too far to the right. Love my take your pick tool. It's good for so many things. And there it is. There is our apple pie Kit Kat box to an A plus teacher. I hope that you enjoyed the video. And if you've got any questions, you can always reach out Marissa at kitchen table stamper.com to join us for Miss Coffee and a Mystery card. Or sometimes now it's coffee and 
a mystery, not a card. Buzz over to the kitchen table stamper craft social. We're on Facebook and the link is in the video below. To shop Stampin' Up 24 seven or to join and get some of these great Hello products, pre-order products in your starter kit, buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net. Thanks for watching.